Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the virtual roadshow of Swiss Resource Capital AG out of Heres, out here from Switzerland. And today we have a yeah, special guest, I would say even, Orania Resources and Dr. Keith Barron, who is here with us from Toronto today. Keith, good morning to Canada. How are you? Good morning. I, I'm not that special, Jochen. <laughs> <laughs> no, but to me you are. <laughs> <That's okay>. No, <laughs> I like you. it really. Thanks for taking the time uh, that we can set up this uh, roadshow here. This is fantastic. And we have a lot of people for checking in. Over 129 registrations, what I saw mm -hmm. here. And that's really a lot that, uh, yeah, it looks like that we have a lot to talk about also. Um, because let's say um, Orania is a great company, but the share price did unfortunately not really well, but I'm pretty sure Keith will also talk about this in a minute. Before we get started, uh, let me do uh, my remarks here as I always do. As you know me all, my name is Jochen Steiger. I'm the CEO and founder of Swiss Resource Capital and also the uh, chief editor and founder of Commodity TV and Rohstoff TV. Very warm welcome also from our side. We are fully complying to the data security law and of course nobody can see each other, nobody can see any names nor emails. Um, it would be great if you can use then the chat function and or the um, Q&A function, which uh, you see uh, in the chat here in the uh, great bar that you use this for uh, your questions, please. And uh, we want to do after the key's presentation, presentation, which should run like 20, 25 minutes, a lively Q&A, as I have a little bit the feeling there will be a lot to discuss, which is great because this is what we are here for. Yeah, so I see almost 100 people are in. So I would suggest, Keith, the floor is yours. Here's the presentation. Enjoy the show. Thanks, ladies and gentlemen, for participating today. Thank you so much for such a, a gracious introduction. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so uh, I'll be talking about uh, our projects in Ecuador, a little bit about Peru as well, but uh, let's uh, just get into it uh i'm i'm well sorry okay now i'm sure that all of you uh who are watching this by now have seen this so many times that you can probably recite it yourselves uh so we'll uh just go forward so if you don't know the story already and i suppose almost everybody uh online does uh we're working in ecuador down near the, the border with peru uh, this is an area that's very, very familiar for me. Um, I've been working uh, in Ecuador uh, in a kind of a concerted uh, effort uh, since as far back as whew, 20 years now, uh, 2001, a long, long time. So it's a major part of my life, uh, even though I still haven't learned Spanish properly. <laughs> but anyway, our property is here in the Crimson Red, uh, down on the border with Peru. And you can see there's been a lot of activity in Ecuador. Uh, these are only the major projects. In fact, a, a good chunk of the, the country is actually covered by concessions. But you can see uh, a couple of big names here. Uh, Soul Gold up on the border with Colombia. Uh, they've got, uh, well, essentially a world-class uh, copper gold porphyry de deposit. Um, it's been, uh, there's a reserve on it now. Uh, both BHP and Newcrest are involved with that. Uh, just a little bit south and west of that is Cadelco. Cadelco is the national mining company of Chile, and they're working on the Urimagua copper porphyry. Adventus, uh, together with uh, with Salazar Resources, have been working on the Curipampa uh, volcanogenic massive sulfide deposits. So that's a polymetallic. And that just got fully funded. So that's going to start, they're going to start doing the build on that soon. Um, further down, uh, Dundee is a new entry into, into Ecuador, and they've taken a, the Loma Larga uh, gold silver deposit. Uh, Lumina, Lumina Gold, which is Ross Beatty's company, has got Cangrejos uh, down south of that. And there's a number of other things, uh, of course, and... Uh, um, you know, I'm sorry, uh, I haven't done the honorable mentions for all the other players in Ecuador, but there's a lot of activity. So here we are in the red. Our concession block is 207,000 uh, hectares and change. That's roughly half a million acres if you're American. And it is in an area that's called the Cordillera de Cudicu. This is a ridge system that runs along 
uh, really along the border, uh, the border area of Ecuador and Peru, and further to the south in what's called the, the Cordillera de Condor. It's actually the height of land uh, between the two countries marks the border. Now you can see a lot of little triangles, yellow and orange and red, uh, to the south of our property. And these are all major projects uh, now with uh, resources, some of them with, with reserves, and indeed a, a couple of them that are in production right now. So let's just start at the top here, San Carlos Pananza. Those are two copper porphyries, uh, which are owned by a consortium of Chinese interests. Uh, they're in pre-production right now. Warinsa, uh, I'll talk about a little bit more, but that's uh, 12 kilometers south of our boundary. It is a fantastic discovery, not a new discovery. It's kind of reawakened after about 20 years. Solaris owns that. And Solaris is now a company that's gone in 20 months from nothing, uh, from just getting onto the market to a market capitalization of one and a half billion Canadian dollars. And that's all based really on, on one porphyry copper discovery. Um, it looks like they have a cluster of porphyries here. Um, fantastic thing really has put Ecuador on the map for investors, just shows what can be done because that company has gone essentially from 30 cents all the way to as high as $17. It's certainly uh, something that that um, we want to do and we think indeed that we're capable of doing. Um, but, uh, you know, I've said uh, a couple of times, look at our land package and in terms of a proximity play, you can't get any better than this because we've got half a million acres uh, really, really just uh, a little bit to the north. So going down the list, Lumina BHP with Tarqui um, and uh, Gamora Lundy Newcrest. Gamora is actually a discovery that was made by my former company, uh, Aurelian Resources, as is down the list, uh, Jackpot and Fruta del Norte. Now, Fruta del Norte is a big gold producer now uh, last quarter or last year, they made 428,000 ounces of gold at a cash cost, I think, of around $720 US, something like that. It is incredibly, incredibly uh, productive. And uh, it is just uh, basically, it's like owning a, um, a mint. <laughs> uh, I wish I still owned it, but my company, Aurelian, found this in 2006. And we sold that company in 2008 uh, to Kinross uh, for 1.2 billion Canadian dollars. Uh, Kinross elected not to put it in production and eventually got sold on to London Gold. And, uh, and it's been in production now uh, for about two and a half years. Um, lots and lots of other stuff in the belt here and lots of majors, Newcrest BHP, uh, Anglo is in here as well. Um, lots and lots of players. So we are on trend. We are on trend. You see the trend coming right through here. And this is one of the reasons why we picked up this property. It is the best property I've seen in my entire career of 39 years, quite honestly. Um, so um, zeroing in on the property, what do you see here? Well, um, down in the south, we have two parallel epithermal belts together. Uh, they represent 60 kilometers, that's 60 kilometers of uh, epithermal uh, type alteration. We find uh, sinters on the surface, and they are full of what we call pathfinder elements. So we're finding, um, we're finding arsenic, antimony, uh, mercury, native mercury, a uh, whole bunch of other things. Uh, and then right on the edges of some of these areas, there's actually uh, artisanal miners who are producing gold. So this is very, very exciting for us. Um, in that little blue uh, rectangle you see there are our sediment hosted uh, copper and silver and silver zinc uh, occurrences. Now, we think this is one system, uh, though due to... Uh, maybe changes in salinity, changes in temperature, the fluids or whatever. We don't know. Uh, it's copper rich at one end and it's zinc rich at the other end. Now, this thing goes for about 52 kilometers across the property. It is absolutely huge. 
Um, and um, we've, we've done a bunch of work over the last year, year and a half uh, on this target. Uh, we've certainly shown that it's real. Um, I think that there could be potentially several uh, mines uh, lurking along this trend. It would certainly make a lot of sense. Um, two of the things that we are, are uh, really focusing on right now in the company are Tadasham, and Tadasham is there up in the northwest. That's a cor copper porphyry type target, and a watcher. A watcher may indeed be a cluster of porphyries uh, like Warinsa to our south, uh, but a uh, very, very exciting thing. And um, yeah, and you know, essentially every 42, every one of the 42 concessions that makes up this big, big contiguous package has got minerals on it of some description. It's really, really quite amazing. So looking at the, uh, the gold, um, gold systems, epithermal uh, essentially means epi, close to the surface, thermal meaning hot water. And these are generated by the circulation of hot water. So think geysers, hot springs, boiling mud pools, all the stuff that you see, uh, places like Japan and Indonesia. And here, this is in Yellowstone National Park. So you can see there's kind of a low angle structure here. This is what we call a silica terrace. And the silica terrace is, is um, made up of silica. It's, uh, it comes out of solution as the fluids which are coming off these geysers and hot springs cool and spread out, go down the slope. So the throat of these geysers here is where most of the steam is coming out, right here and over here. And potentially thousands and thousands of years from now, when this area is, is cold and dead, uh, there will be veins under the uh, plumbing system of this. And if... Uh, the things that are uh, around the, uh, the national park are of any indication uh, these are going to be uh, gold deposits. So this is essentially a gold deposit in progress. This is the modern era. Our stuff is 150 million years old. It's the same age as the dinosaurs. So the geothermal areas are long, long extinct, but we're finding these silica terraces, which are the key that you have the plumbing system, and we're also finding the concentration of what we call pathfinder elements, arsenic, antimony, thallium, a little bit of tellurium, native mercury, uh, and other things as well, some high silver in places. Um, so this is very, very exciting for us, the right environment to be in. Um, Curry Yaoi Latore C, um, this is one of our uh, our occurrences, one of our showings, actually two of them here. And we've got smart in the last uh, year or so uh, looking at textures of these things. And actually what happened, um, uh, a professor at a university in Auckland in New Zealand came out with an atlas of textures. And you could basically tell where you are in the system by looking at the type of rock. And this is a rock that we call, whoops, this is a rock here that we call geyserite, and it's made up of little pellets. And these are actually sand grains that will circulate and convect in the water column underneath the geyser, and they get, they get surrounded. They become like little ping pong balls of silica, and they will tell you where the center of the vent is. But besides this, we want to refine this a little bit more and as I said recently in, uh, in a letter to shareholders, uh, we would like to do uh, a controlled uh, system, uh, something called CSAMT. It's a magnetotelluric uh, type uh, uh, um, geophysical technique to find conductivity. It has been used with very, very uh, great um, uh, success in Japan, uh, there is one company that uh, has recently been doing drilling there, and they've hit some very, very uh, nice high grade in veins uh, in a situation very, very similar to us, uh, blind um, veins. So things that do not come to surface, 
and there is no gold on the surface at the in the vicinity of where we're finding these things in Ecuador. But you have to get a little bit uh, like a geological detective and figure out where these things are going to be in the subsurface. So that's what we've been doing. Um, you know, this is these are techniques that are used uh, in in other places like Nevada uh, to uh, to to great uh, utility. In any case, um, we will uh, we're kind of getting back to basics on this stuff. And heck, you know, uh, Jochen just told me the gold price broke to two thousand and sixty five dollars, and uh, this is not lost on me. We have to pursue gold here because gold is what. Uh, is what our shareholders want. It's what I want. <laughs> and potentially we have a lot of it here. This is Tatasham. Tatasham is, uh, as I said, a porphyry copper type anomaly. But in this case, it is highly, it's a body that is highly, highly magnetic. Now we've been talking about this for a while. Uh, it's three kilometers by one kilometer in size. Uh, we don't know actually how deep it is. This is a little bit uh, hypothetical. Uh, we don't know how, how deep the thing is. I want to do what's called a gravity survey over the top. I've talked about this uh, to, uh, to find out where the, uh, how, how deep we're going to have to drill on the thing. And, uh, but it is a big body. What we think it is, is a magnetite copper scarn. A magnetite copper scarn, and a good uh, a, a good example of this is one called Erzberg, uh, which was mined by Freeport MacMoran uh, many years ago. Erzberg in Dutch means Iron Mountain, and it it just stuck up out of the ground, a great big mound of magnetite with copper all over it. Uh, in this case, ours does not stick up uh, out of the ground, unfortunately. But in the case of Freeport, they mined that before they discovered Grassberg. Grassberg porphyry came a number of years later, and um, and but uh, Erzberg was a major major contributor of uh, of copper to the company for a number of years. This is a watcher, and a watcher is an amazing thing because it outcrops. So this is what we believe is the top of the porphyry body. And this is a type of alteration we call quartz sericite pyrite or QSP. It is very, very typical of a porphyry system. And you can see all the yellow here. That's pyrite, otherwise known as fool's gold. Doesn't carry any copper itself, though there, there, there are some traces of it in here. But this is not expected to be the copper body here. This is, would be an envelope which is enclosing it. And if you can think of a porphyry kind of shape like one of the old style light bulbs, I'm not talking about an LED, but one of the ones that we're familiar with uh, over the last, uh, you know, 70, 80 years, um, and having a number of concentric shells. This would be the outer shell of alteration, and we would have to drill into this, uh, and uh, beneath this, uh, conceptually, we would find uh, the uh, the copper um, calcopyrite and boronite rich uh, zone. So this is um, some stream sediments that we actually collected four years ago. Now I want to say um, the reason you know people say, well, why are you suddenly just uh, working on this thing now? Well, it's because uh, a gentleman who was the head man of the village got very greedy and uh, wanted us to pay a bribe. Uh, we refused to do it for access. And uh, since then, what has happened? Uh, the Shuar people, the indigenous people in the area have said, uh, we want the work. We want to work, the, we want jobs here. And everyone else is getting jobs in the region except for us. So they actually had a bit of a push and, uh, and they evicted this guy. And so now there's a, another person in charge and we've been able to get access. Uh, really only since December and then again in January uh, for another part of it. Uh, so we've got back to this after a hiatus actually of four years. And four years ago, we generated these stream sediment anomalies. And you can see lots and lots of molyb molybdenum here. And actually, if I put the stream courses on here, you can see it's linear along the streams. 
and copper uh, on this side. And these are, are fairly hefty numbers. These are certainly respectable numbers for stream sediments. And these are superimposed on a uh, conductivity image, mobile MT conductivity image, but not at the surface. This image is actually taken from about 500 meters below the surface. So what does that tell you? Well, we know we have a streaming conductivity at the absolute surface, the land surface, because that's due to the pyrite. And this thing continues down for at least a half a kilometer. And that's pretty amazing. So we really have continuity here. I don't think it can be anything else than a porphyry, uh, copper porphyry. And uh, really what we need to do is stick some holes on it. Now, we're, uh, we're waiting for some lab results back on uh, some, um, some soil samples that were taken over the top of this thing. And also we are, um, we, we, I would like to do a gravity survey over this as well, uh, just to get a, a feeling for how deep the copper zone is going to be, how deep the, the major a part of this porphyry is going to be. We want to be sure that we position the very first hole so that we get a potential bonanza result here. Of course, most of you are familiar with uh, the, the work that we do with the Schwar. The Schwar are indigenous stakeholders in the area. And uh, there are over 50 villages in the entire concession package. Uh, here I am about a, a year and a half ago. And what I did, I actually, my private foundation, uh, the Step Forward Foundation, which works alongside of Arania, um, donated 4,400 pairs of rubber boots to the little kids here uh, because they were getting snake bite in the forest. And actually, uh, very, very sadly, two of them uh, died from snake bites. So we put an end to that. And of course, these, I'm sure these boots will be passed down uh, within the families to the little, little kids as the older ones grow out of them. Um, but we're the major uh, employer in the area, in fact, the only employer. Um, and uh, it's taken time, uh, but over time, we have made friends with the Schwar here. And uh, I've got a very, very good relationship. Every time I go to the villages, I give one of my speeches in very bad Spanish, but everyone seems to appreciate it. And uh, it's, uh, it's just a joy to be there. And these are just a couple little girls. They 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 won a coloring competition that we had, and you see that they've they've uh, this is their rendition of Miners. <laughs> it's rather funny. Anyway, so um, this is the capital structure. So we're trading uh, at as of March seventh at seventy cents. This is considerably down from uh, the highs that we've experienced. Well, just early uh, last year. Uh, you know, we were $3, $4, even $5 stock for a long time. Uh, and because of that, we were able to keep our share count low. And somebody said to me just the other day, how is it that you've got only 52 million shares out? Um, and the company has been around for 15 years, not working just uh, only in, in Ecuador for 15 years. In fact, we've only been working on the ground in Ecuador since 2017. But I've done my very, very level-headed best over time uh, to keep the share count down. What does this mean? If we have a nice big discovery like, like Warenza, for instance, like Warenza, then uh, you split it 52 million ways and you can just do the calculation on what uh, could happen here to the share price. That's the reason I'm into the stock. Um, I own 39% of the company. I do not draw a salary. I am completely aligned with the shareholders. So 9% of our shareholders are Swedes. And I'm sure that a lot of them are on, on the, uh, the call right now. And hello, everybody. I, uh, I was in Malmo um, uh, last year and, uh, and said hello to a lot of them. Uh, and they've come to us uh, basically because London Gold, who own Fruta del Norte, um, have a listing both in Toronto and in Stockholm. 
Uh, 7% of our shareholders are Ecuadorian and hello to them too. Um, a lot of these people are high net worth uh, people and family offices, and it's great to have them on board. Uh, we had no Ecuadorian shareholders for Aurelian, uh, and certainly, you know, these folks have, have, have realized that there is potentially a lot of money to be made uh, from discovery. 44% is split between many, 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 uh, actually thousands of retail people. Um, uh, mostly in the U.S., in um, in Canada, and other countries, and then 40% is held by insiders. So I think that's about it. Just a summary here. Um, as I've said, the, the Lost Cities project is roughly 208,000 hectares in the Cordillera de Cudicu, 42 mineral concessions. Uh, we're in the process of paying for all those concessions right now. Uh, Geological sim similarities, not just similarities, I mean, spot on, it is, uh, it's one-to-one, -one, uh, very, very, very uh, similar to the Cordillera del Condor. And that's not a surprise because it's contiguous and it's the same geology. The Ecuadorian government is supportive of responsible exploration mining. In fact, last week, President Lasso had a meeting with the mining chamber and again emphasized his support of the mining uh, business. And he also said, uh, he gave a warning to other ministries in the government and said, look, you have to uh, lighten up on the mining industries and streamline things and cut the red tape and make these uh, projects ha happen. Because uh, just having the, uh, the value sitting in the ground is not doing any good for anyone. Large number of targets identified, I've been through them. Our corporate strategy approved by the board is uh, to focus on what I consider to be our core competency, which is epithermal gold and porphyry copper. Uh, to some extent, we got back to basics on this stuff. Uh, we hadn't done any work on, on gold uh, for over a year. Uh, some of that was because of the pandemic, of course, uh, but uh, we're, we're about back up to strength now and, uh, and a very uh, close to uh, to getting going on a number of, of things now. Um, joint ventures and partnerships. I've talked about this for more than 18 months. We have a heck of a lot on our plate here, actually 20 different working areas, far more than a, than a junior company can support. Um, this is not a bad thing. It gives us lots of optionality to do different things here. And But it is time. It is timely now to uh, seriously uh, start uh, talking about uh, uh, doing uh, some, some tie-ups with folks. Um, basic field exploration, very basic. Um, more uh, work on the epithermal gold stuff. I, I said in the letter to shareholders, we have a technique using a Raman spectrometer. Uh, very, very low cost and very quick. And uh, we're going to be applying that to our gold targets. And at the bottom, uh, me, chairman, CEO, and president, I own 39, roughly 39% of the shares outstanding. So I think, uh, Jochen, that is mm -hmm. about it. Yes. And anybody who needs to get a hold of me can get a hold of me through the email here that you can see. Uh, if they can't find me, get a hold of Carolyn, our VP of Investor Relations, because uh, she pretty much always knows where I'm at. Yes, and Thank we are also... So Thank you very much, Keith. And we are also there, of course, in German to help you when you are from the German side. So let me stop that uh, presentation here. Thank you very much, Keith. And uh, I'm pretty sure, oh, yes, there are a lot of questions here already. So let me screen that shortly here. Um, okay, let's start with one question because it's really a lot. What additional challenges, challenges exist by being on the eastern side of the Andes compared to the western side? Well, this is actually an interesting question, but most of it, I would say, um, well, I mean, there's there's some major cities on the eastern side of the Andes. Not That's not a big deal. Mm -hmm. uh, I guess the major challenge would be for the porphyry copper companies getting their concentrate uh, to the coast uh, to be put on a freighter and then sent overseas to a smelter. There is no smelter in the country right now. However, 
However, uh, a tender has just gone out uh, within the last couple of weeks for a hydroelectric project just on our southern boundary. It's you know, on the Rio Santiago. It will be 3.5 gigawatts, which is huge. It'll be the biggest hydroelectric project in the whole country. And this thing, we think, could potentially um, supply power for what we call a hydromet uh, smelter. And the hydromet smelter is uh, a type of smelter. There's one in existence. Valley uh, has one working in Newfoundland for both uh, copper and nickel. Uh, there's no uh, effluent gases. So there's no SO2, SO3 that's pumped into the atmosphere. Uh, actually, the byproduct, this is gypsum, which you can use for gypsum board. Um, and um, so it uses, uh, it uses clean energy. It uses electricity uh, to make uh, ingots of, uh, of copper. And, uh, and I think that with this um, thing going essentially hand in hand uh, with the por porphyry copper development in the area, I, I think it's an extremely positive thing. Mm -hmm. Okay. Before we go deeper into the properties, there is, of course, several questions about uh, Richard Spencer. Are you allowed or can you even comment on that? I'm not sure. Um, well, um, Richard Spencer has uh, gone his own path. Mm -hmm. And certainly we wish him all, all the best and good luck. And, um, you know, Richard... Um, Richard spent a lot of time uh, with this company and uh, working on um, on various things. Um, yeah, you know, he 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 has uh, certainly uh, uh, made a, uh, a a a major contribution, but um, you know, he he's moved on. Um, it is my intention, and I've said this publicly, that uh, I want to get. Um, some expertise uh, in into the projects, uh, people who have worked specifically on these types of targets, meaning I, I would like to get a porphyry copper expert uh, working uh, for us and uh, an epithermal gold expert. Um, you know, we have a very, very capable Ecuadorian staff, um, but uh, none of them have worked internationally. Uh, I've worked in 19 different countries, so I've been exposed to all kinds of different uh, ore environments. Um, but really, uh, it, it, it's going to take some outside expertise and some thinking outside the box, uh, really, to develop our projects. Um, you know, like the, the, the copper and the silver and sediments has never been seen in Ecuador before. And, um, you know, our, our Ecuadorian geologists are kind of scratching their heads about it. Um, that's one of the reasons why we've had Gregor Borg um, looking over our shoulder and advising us. But Gregor is not somebody who's available, um, you know, uh, seven days a week in a, in a uh, concerted way uh, to go and stomp around the property. Uh, but that's just a that's just a, 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 a suggestion, because um, I said, you know, we're majorly focusing on the porphyry copper story and uh, on the gold story. Porphyry copper, I mean, copper hit $5, five in, in, in price uh, a couple of days ago. And, uh, you know, it's, it's sitting there. What is it right now? It's $4.64 today. Uh, this is incredible. Um, you know, it hasn't been like this for years. And, uh, and we need to, uh, to, to capitalize on this. Absolutely. Right. I mean, sometimes also passes are going in different directions that this happens. I mean, that's, that's a normal thing in, in yes. business life, right? Okay. Super. Um, before we move on, also a question from my, my side, because I'm also a shareholder. I bought at various prices. I bought at much higher prices. So I'm also down. Um, what is to your personal thinking? What do you think? Why was the share price hit so hefty? Well, I think it's a combination of things, but uh, to a large extent, it's got to do with the pandemic. So, mm -hmm. um, you know, we decided that we were going to uh, keep everyone employed, uh, no layoffs. Um, of course, we had no idea how long it was going to go on for. 
So, you know, initially, and this is back in March of 2020, we were shut down all activity from March until June. They closed the airports. None of our um, uh, foreign staff, uh, myself, uh, I couldn't visit Ecuador and we were just simply shut. But, uh, you know, the, the money uh, still was spent um, and, uh, and not generating any, any news at all and, and no advancement on, on the, the project. I mean, I was in the same situation as everybody else in the world who, uh, who runs a business, right? What do you do? Um, so, and I know how, how difficult it is to find staff, uh, qualified staff. Uh, in any case, um, since then, uh, there have been uh, various lockdowns. In some case, they've been, cases, they've been working on what's called the traffic light system, green, yellow, and red. And so green, you could have all your people back. Yellow, you could have 50%. And red, you weren't allowed to, to go into the area. Mm -hmm. And of course, uh, we have been very, very cognizant of the situation with the Schwar. And very early on in the pandemic, there were some nasty people who were on social media saying that the, the uh, Schwar would be particularly vulnerable to covid and it would wipe them out, much like uh, uh, like smallpox did during the, the years of the conquistadors. Of course, that didn't happen. And uh, these were just troublemakers. Um, and uh, but you know, we didn't want to be held responsible for bringing uh, bringing COVID to the Schwar. But you know, the Schwar travel in and out. People have to go to hospital on occasion. Uh, and uh, to deliver babies and such. And, you know, eventually it was going to get there. And fortunately, there have been, I think, out of 120,000 people, 13 deaths. That's all. Uh, so they, they seem to have potentially a very, very strong immunity systems. Uh, but we think today, uh, though the government has not said it, we think today that herd immunity has uh, has reached them. Uh, right. They're completely unconcerned. They go around without masks, uh, without social distancing. They just don't care mm -hmm. because uh, if they do get sick, it's just the sniffles. Super, perfect. So that was already the, the first part of my question was also the question from a shareholder from Munich. And his second question was, what are the three reasons to buy your shares now at, 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 at this stage over five years low instead of selling? Uh huh. <laughs> well, um, I haven't sold a share. I don't in intend to sell any shares, and certainly I, oh, no way would I sell anywhere near this price. I, mm -hmm. I think that this, uh, as I said during the presentation, we got 52 million shares out. I mean, smell the coffee, folks. 52 million shares out. It's cheaper than it's ever been before. And we're on the cusp of drilling things like a watch in Tadasham. And the company that's on our southern boundary is worth a billion and a half. Connect the dots here and see what the potential is, mm -hmm. right? And I think the potential here is enormous, not just in porphyry copper, but in gold and other things as well. Um, but, you know, it is expensive to hold on to all this property. It is expensive to explore all the property. And so, you know, for the last two years, um, we've been uh, we've been doing work. Um, a lot of it, uh, well, you know, we've been paying wages, and a lot of it has not been rewarded with uh, with great results. And mm -hmm. so, we've been uh, punished for that by the market. Uh, you know, when we started this thing out uh, in 2017, started working, there were very other, very few. Uh, competing stories out there like uh, ours. Now there's a ton of them. And so, uh, you know, uh, there's a lot of people out there that are looking just for instant gratification and they're jumping from story to story to story to story. And um, and so, you know, when our stock takes a little bit of a hit, uh, they they think the sky is falling mm -hmm. and, and so they, they, they dump it. But uh, long-term thing, and I'm not talking about very, very long term from here on out, mm. because I think the heavy lifting on this project has already been done. There's been $66 million spent, $66 million, and I've only got 52 million shares out. That's mm. pretty damned incredible 
you look around the, the marketplace at other junior mining companies and see there's a lot of them out there that have 100 million shares out, 200 million shares out. We have a lot of room to move here. But that being said, uh, and I have said publicly many times that we're in a position now where we've done enough uh, work uh, to uh, potentially attract a partner. And I'm not talking about uh, another junior. Uh, I'm talking about uh, senior companies. And, uh, you know, we, we do have some people in the data room. We've had people in the data room for the last year. Uh, but for whatever reason, they, you know, they're, they don't put a toe in the water and, 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 and put an offer in. But everyone's mm -hmm. just watching and waiting. And, um, yeah, you know, when it happens, it's going to happen. It, it yeah. will happen. Absolutely. And, uh, I think, uh, you know, it, it'll be a bit of a surprise, uh, but a welcome surprise. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, I, I hate to see the share price where it is right now. I really do. Um, and, uh, you know, we, we did a whole bunch of drilling. Um, unfortunately, we didn't come up with any uh, economic uh, intersections. Maybe a, 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 it's debatable something at Shimpia on the zinc side. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, this is really why I think we need to focus down on things that are easier to drill. Um, and zinc and interior Shimpia are not easy things to drill. Uh, you've seen we've, we've put some holes that are as much as a thousand meters deep on Senkin. Mm. I think uh, our money is much better deployed on working on a massive target like Awacha, mm -hmm. uh, where it's, uh, it's, it's rather difficult to, to miss, mm -hmm. uh, in my opinion. There's also a question, when does the Awacha drilling start? Aha. Uh -huh. Well, as, as I said, um, I want to do uh, I want to do, uh, I'm waiting for the stream said results. I want to do a gravity survey over the thing. I've not got the gravity survey people in country yet. Uh, it's a very simple thing to do, but I'm just talking to uh, a geophysical company right now, um, a provider. Um, but, you know, that will come in time. Uh, I am not going to get pushed to drill as we have been in the past. And people, shareholders can see the results. When you're pushed to drill and you're not quite ready to drill, then you miss. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm not going to have any more misses in this company. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, the drilling will happen. Uh, we're looking at the third or fourth part of this year. Um, and um, my my preference, obviously, is to uh, to get a drill up on Awacha. But I want to get a drill on Tadashem as well mm -hmm. and see what the hell it is. It's, uh, it's so compelling a target. If you look at our magnetic maps, and we've never released them, but uh, if you were to look at them, you can see this target from across the room. And you would think, uh, what the heck is that thing? Uh, it's, it's an extremely compelling uh, target. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I need to get, uh, get the drills where we're going to get the most bang for the buck. And, uh, and and get the share appreciation for the shareholder. And so so that's what I want to do. The gold mm -hmm. stuff, um, you know, I'm going to have to get, uh, get some uh, geophysics done, I think, on some of these targets. Um, mm -hmm. I'm going to try the Raman spectrometer uh, work. Um, that'll, that'll happen very soon. And, um, you know, we'll see what we get. Uh, but... Um, I'd like to do the CSAMT over things like Crunchy Hill. Crunchy Hill has no tree cover on it, uh, or most of it has no tree cover, so it's quite easy to uh, uh, to put a grid and, and go ahead and do that. So that's that's uh, really uh, what I'd like to do. Uh, there are other things as well uh, on the operational side, um, uh, some... Uh, uh, the, there will be a news flow coming, um, you know, short term and longer term. Um, you know, we haven't uh, we haven't shut down. Um, so, you know, though, uh, uh, I, I've got a kind of situation. Uh, it's a bit of a rebuild and a little bit of a hitting the reset button on this stuff. But mm -hmm. uh, uh, it's nothing that, uh, you know, I haven't had to do before. 
Mm -hmm. And um, we're going to get refocused here and uh, find some copper and find some gold. Mm -hmm. Definitely, yeah, but definitely, please do so. That would be great. <laughs> Then we have a question from an uh, English uh, fund here. Varinza uh -huh. is just south of Orania's concessions, yet it appears your porphyry copper targets are substantially further north, while your focus is epithermal gold in the south, close to Varinza, geologically or closer to Kelly, whatever that creation is. Isn't that a bit strange? Aha. Uh -huh. <laughs> well, I guess you can, all I can say about this is no comment. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, good. Yeah. Then we move to the next one. Oh, yeah. Have the COVID restrictions been lifted? I forgot to ask you that when we were talking about COVID. Is now everything clean and clear? Uh, not officially. Mm -hmm. And okay. uh, officially, the government still wants to um, vaccinate the entire population. Mm -hmm. um, I believe that vaccination effort is still going ahead, uh, but uh, like everywhere else, the numbers of COVID infection have dropped off dramatically. Mm -hmm. So that's uh, that's a positive thing in our area as well. They've dropped. Uh, <coughs> I think uh, the last number I saw, 83 cases um, versus uh, two weeks ago, 283 mm -hmm. cases, uh, 263 cases. Um, so yeah, it's, it's, it's dropping quite fast. Okay, super. Then I see several questions. I just have to move it a bit, uh, about Peru, because, uh, I see three, four questions even about sure. Peru, but what's going on there. I also got an email question here as you are one of the largest uh, landholders there. So what is the path in Peru to increase the value here? Do you do any work there? What are the holding costs? Is that, uh, let's say, affordable, not as expensive like in Ecuador? Can you elaborate a bit on that, please? Yeah, okay. Well, um, things have been very, very slow amongst the government in Peru uh, to award new concessions. And they blame the pandemic and the fact that there's nobody in the offices um, so of the, uh, of the concessions that we, uh, applied for, uh, you know, we've had 76,900 hectares awarded. Um, we applied for three quarters of a million. Uh, so it's, uh, it's a very, very small amount, uh, that's actually been delivered. Um, the, uh, the cost of the concessions in Peru is a mere fraction of what it is in Ecuador. Um, the uh, concession fees are due in at the end of June. Uh, we don't really know what's going to happen, and the government has not said anything yet about concessions that have not been awarded. Now, last year, we were required to pay for all the concessions that had still not been rewarded, uh, awarded, and they said uh, if, uh, for whatever reason, Uh, you know, they overlap a national park or something. We decide not to give them to you. Uh, we will give you a credit. Um, but, you know, they're so, so far behind. We don't know uh, what the story is going to be. Um, the, the, the deadline for everybody in, in country is, uh, is the end of June uh, for, for the payment. So I expect we'll get an announcement sometime uh, here in the spring um, on, on what the, the protocol will be. Um, what are we going to do with Peru? Well, Peru was kind of an option. Uh, you know, we saw a, a, a strategically, I think it was a great thing that we did uh, because we, uh, we sidled up ne next to Hannon um, and uh, we knew that Hannon had found uh, copper and silver and sediments in exactly the same rocks as we have in Ecuador. Mm -hmm. Um, so we targeted those rocks in Peru that had not already been staked. And uh, we got this uh, beautiful land position. Um, and then since then, uh, the, uh, the Japanese government, uh, Jogmec, have come in and done a, a joint venture with, uh, with Hannon. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, obviously somebody sees that the Hannon project is, is, uh, is worthwhile. Um, And um, we, quite frankly, haven't done anything yet uh, towards uh, finding a, a partner uh, for, uh, for the Peruvian stuff. 
Um, our focus has been very much on Ecuador, uh, but uh, certainly it's on my agenda. And, um, you know, it's, uh, I think it's a, a valuable piece of property. I think if you were trying to do it today, after um, all the press releases that have come out from Hannon, uh, it would be a, a difficult undertaking to assemble the same property. So this thing has value just uh, by uh, way of uh, what we call closeology. Um, mm -hmm. and, uh, and certainly we know the same sort of rocks occur on our property. Um, there's every reason to believe that we're going to have the same sort of results uh, in mm -hmm. future. But, you know, because most of the property has not been awarded, uh, I have seen uh, no reason to spend a lot of money on uh, on the small pieces that we do have so far mm -hmm. okay so concentration is really ecuador yeah of course yeah super then we have a lot of questions about monthly burn rate outside of trading how much does the company need what is the cash position and of course there's also the question of a london fund advisor here which i know quite well um, you have spent $66 million so far, and uh, how much went into the ground? How much went into the ground? I don't know. I haven't done the calculation. Um, <laughs> I think we've done 32 drill holes to date. Um, majority of that was spent on, on expiration, of course. Um, many, many millions spent just in collecting the stream sediment data from the whole property. Mm -hmm. um, and, uh, you know, you haven't in me have a, a very, very high priced executive uh, pulling down uh, $300,000, dollars a year because I don't draw a salary. So, um, you know, most of the money has been spent where it's meant to be spent. Um, you know, I have to pay uh, salaries and, and wages and, and all the rest of it. And there's overhead and the money that I have to pay to the exchange, uh, which I'm always uh, low to part with. Um, but uh, if you want a listing on the stock exchange, you have to pay for it. Mm. So, you know, um, there's a, a whole bunch of stuff that has to get done here. Um, yeah, we, we, uh, we try to keep our overhead down as, as low as possible. Um, how much money do we have and what is our burn rate? Well, I, you know, I'm not even going to get into this because as I said, we're doing a bit of a refocus on all this. Right. Um, and, um, you know, it's, uh, I haven't got all, all of it nailed down how much it's going to cost to do X, Y, Z. And, um, you know, I, I just don't think it's appropriate for that discussion right now. Mm -hmm. Um, You know, as far as the money we have, you can see uh, from our last quarterly statements, um, that's uh, legally the only thing I'm allowed to say, because uh, there are other people who are investors who are not on this call. Um, and um, yeah, you know, we, um, we push ahead and we, we do the program. Mm -hmm. um, okay. but as I said, it's, uh, it's going to be a lot more focused Mm -hmm. And uh, I'll tell you, we're not drilling any more thousand meter holes. Mm -hmm. We're not doing that. Mm -hmm. And that's where a lot of money went. Uh, you know, the last hole that we drilled on the program, we, we drilled this salt wall and it turned out to be a total bust. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, um, nature doesn't cooperate sometimes. And I don't have any uh, short term uh, reason to go back and redrill that hole. Uh, I think we've moved on. We've got other, other more important things to do. And certainly uh, a watcher is coming. Uh, you know, mm -hmm. when we drilled that, we had no access to a watcher. Now we do. Mm -hmm. um, so it's, it's pointless to, to be uh, mm -hmm. facing stuff at Senkin and Interior Shimpia. Yeah. Okay. Then the shareholder is asking, we started this journey looking for the lost cities. And I remember the story you told me like four yeah. years ago when we were sitting in St. Gallen together at lunch. Uh, is this story still relevant? It certainly is relative, relevant. And, and, you know, we said in a press release not too long ago, uh, there's a new area that we just got access to. And, uh, and Carolina Lasso, who's just come, come on as head of our corporate social responsibility managed to get access there where the previous two people could not. Um, 
And this is an area where there's several hundred uh, artisanal miners. Mm -hmm. um, now, Jean-Paul said to me the other day, my, my VP exploration, he said, well, you know, we're going to have to do some stream sediment over that concession block now. And I said, what's the point? But, you know, just go and ask the miners. Go, go and follow them. Follow them through the bush and see, see where the stuff is coming from. Mm -hmm. I can't tell you today if it's coming from alluvials or if they found a hard rock source there. I hope that they do. Mm -hmm. I know that in the general area, uh, in, uh, in adjacent areas, we found uh, pathfinder elements in the, in the soils and in the streams and in the rocks. Um, so could there potentially be um, uh, a, a hard rock source of the gold here? Well, certainly there's a lot of miners in this area and a, a concentration of gold and it's coming from somewhere. Mm -hmm. So um, this is an area that we've never been into before. Uh, you know, in almost five years of work, we've never been in there. Um, we, we're just getting access in there now. And, uh, you know, we have to uh, see what the rocks are telling us, see what's going on. Uh, but mm -hmm. uh, as I said, you know, in, in my former company, Aurelian, uh, we, we drilled a whole bunch of showings that were essentially uh, found by the artisanal miners just drilling over where uh, underneath where they were working. Mm -hmm. And uh, that, uh, for the first uh, several years, sustained the company with results. Um, then later on, Fruita del Norte, of course, was a blind discovery. It doesn't come to surface, and that was the discovery of our own. Uh, but we learned a lot of stuff along the way. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, so I, uh, I think that the Lost Cities thing is certainly, certainly appropriate. Uh, Metron, the company that was doing uh, statistical analysis for us, um, the area where um, where uh, these miners are working is very, very close to uh, the area that Metron forecasted uh, one of the lost cities would be. Um, so that's encouraging as well. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, you know, we'll we'll investigate it and 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 find out uh, what it's all about. Mm -hmm. Okay, super. So if I um, yeah reconsider the last hour here, I have the feeling that you are yeah doing a new strategy now. Uh, you are going, let's say, a little bit a different path, which I think is uh, really something which makes sense, definitely. Um, as uh, the old path was not yet uh, filled with that success you wanted to have. Wouldn't it also make sense maybe to say, okay, maybe a, a big strategic partner as uh, your property are so large and this is maybe a little bit too much for a smaller exploration company that that would make sense and also can you please describe what is your let's say overall goal you want to achieve for 2022 what is the most desired thing you want to reach well um scenario like we have with numerous numerous targets um you know, if we continue to raise money, raise money, raise money, raise money, we'll have a, a share count of 300 million shares out there uh, mm -hmm. at two cents. Mm -hmm. um, you know, um, and uh, the individual shareholder will have very, very little uh, exposure to the whole thing. Um, it's probably, well, I'm not saying probably, it's, in my opinion, much more preferable to have a, a major company um, in there, uh, spending the major company's expiration money uh, so that, uh, you know, the company, our company retains maybe 20%, 25%, 30%, whatever. And let's say, you know, we strike a deal that uh, we get uh, carried uh, to a feasibility study or get carried to even production, uh, free carried. Uh, free carried interest, right? Um, you know, that's much more preferable to having uh, 300 million shares out and everyone diluted down to nothing. Mm -hmm. um, you know, one way or another, uh, as I've said many times before, Rania is not a production company. They're an exploration company. Our business is finding the stuff and we've done that. Mm -hmm. We've done that. So the idea now... Uh, is to uh, continue exploration, of course, 
Um, and uh, but I would certainly like to be spending uh, other people's money uh, on this stuff and uh, retaining a nice healthy interest uh, for uh, for the company uh, going forward. Uh, what what is the alternative? Well, we we drop a, a bunch of property and we walk away from it. Um, if we were to do that, mm -hmm. uh, I think. Uh, Certainly, somebody will come in there immediately, come up alongside us. And uh, are those people going to be uh, well, um, you know, uh, have a, a welcoming to the Schwar people, mm -hmm. our stakeholders? Uh, you know, I think there's a lot of potential to mess this thing up. Mm -hmm. um, and we've spent four years now cultivating good relationship and, uh, you know, uh, other companies um, have done it in Ecuador. Uh, we've seen it. Uh, they've come in and they've they've messed things up. And in one afternoon, uh, you can destroy all the credibility that's taken many many mm -hmm. years to uh, uh, to put together. Mm -hmm. So um, you know, I I um, I'm trying to keep uh, the property um, together as much as I can, and. Um, I think it's uh, it's certainly much more attractive um, as it is uh, to a major rather than having a whole bunch of holes in it. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Okay, super. The hour is over, and wow. I think uh, we touched on uh, everything here. Yeah, I don't see any new stuff here. That is fine, and uh, yeah. So, Keith, thank you very much. All the best. And, of course, thank I you. have a feeling we talk quite soon. And hopefully see us quite soon as we are both living in Switzerland. Yes. <laughs> that would be great. And, uh, yeah, thanks for all the information. I know it was a tough hour for you also because you don't like the share price as we don't like the share price. I hate because it. We, yeah, <laughs> we all sit that. in the same boat. Yeah. The only thing uh, which I will use now is that I probably average down here my position because uh, that's uh, like, a, yeah, a nice opportunity opportunity to really grab some cheap uh, Orania shares. I really will consider that tomorrow. Yeah. And uh, yeah, wish you all the best. Thanks, Keys, and uh, hope to see you soon. Bye-bye. Thank you so much, Jochen. Bye-bye. Thank you. Yeah, ladies and gentlemen, that was the virtual roadshow of Swiss Resource Capital with Orania Resources and Dr. Keys Baron. And you heard it, I think Keys gave us some good explanations here, what happened around the company, also why the share price really went down. And yeah, it's a yeah un un uh, uncomfortable combination of uh, COVID of several things. And this could happen in business, but now uh, they are reshaping the focus of the company, which is certainly uh, a, a really good thing to to do so and let's hope for good success this year some big yeah hits hopefully and uh, nice discoveries and maybe a strategic partner who knows i will get some more shares definitely to average down because i bought also above the three dollar level so stay tuned thanks for watching us uh, thanks for really participating today from all over the world in this virtual roadshow wish you all the best please stay healthy that's the most important thing these days and hope to see you all soon in good shape Bye-bye from Switzerland for now.